Uh, we're looking at how we, uh, our biblical worldview is so shaped by our biblical worldview of the end times. Uh, if we see the end of time as God portrays it in Scripture, it shapes the way we think and the way we live now. And we've looked at, at some of that, and, but we, and yesterday we looked at the creation itself and how that's going to be changed. I want to uh, shift directions today and look at ourselves and how we are as are facing uh, the end times as well as individuals. What is God's plan? He plans for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells and which we will also dwell. So let's take a look at that. We're going back to Romans chapter 8 where we were yesterday. This time we'll look at verse 19 and verse uh, 27. But in verse 19 it says, Romans 8, says this, For the anxious longing of the creation eagerly awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. So in his picture here, the creation is going to be changed, it's going to be redeemed at the same uh, time that the sons of God are redeemed. In that sense, uh, there is a connection between our redemption, our final redemption, and the final redemption of the planet and of the creation. In verse 27, uh, as he goes on down through your action, verse 25, he says, For if we hope for what we do not see with perseverance, we eagerly wait for it. So he's saying here, look, we have a great hope. <clears throat> that hope is uh, not yet seen. That's what hope is all about. You don't have hope if you already have it. So we have this great hope, and that hope rests in what the Lord is going to do with us in the future. So our, uh, if we're invested thinking that we're going to live forever, which is a really ridiculous thing to believe, but if we if we believe that, if that's the idea that we're just going to continue on, uh, then that shapes how we live. But eventually we figure this out, and we know that we need something new in in the future. So we think of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What is life like for the believer in the future? And we have some wonderful passages of Scripture that deal with that, and none probably better than 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 57. that talks about our new redemption, redemptive body, our new creation in eternity. What will we look like? What will we be like when we go to be with Him? And that is very important for our understanding of the end times. In verse 51 of 1 Corinthians 15, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we'll all be changed. A mystery in the New Testament is a basically a secret that needed to be revealed. We would never know this, he is saying, unless God revealed it to us. And uh, he's revealing some new information to us at this point in 1 Corinthians. Here's what he's going to reveal to us. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we will be changed. So there's going to come a time, a point in, in time in which the Lord is going to change us. Now he's talking about believers here. He is going to, he's going to raise us in incorruptib incorruptibility. Uh, we will, we who were born in sin, we whose, whose bodies were feeble and we died, and, and we have been battling with sin all of our lives, and our bodies have had the effects of sin, all that's going to be changed. Verse 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this corruptible puts on the incorruptible, and the mortal puts on the immortality, then will come about the word that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, death, where is your, your victory? Now the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So here we have this wonderful picture. At the moment of conversion, at the moment you come to Jesus Christ, He gives us a new nature. He changes who we are. All things are have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But He did not at that moment change our bodies. Our bodies are still in this world, and they're still affected by sin. They feel they're still feeble. Uh, he calls them corruptible here in the sense that they perish. And uh, so we live in these bodies and we battle with these bodies, as wonderful as they are. If any little thing goes wrong with them physically, then we face the consequences of that. But all that changes now. In, at the moment, in a twinkling of, eye, of the eye, the Lord gives us a new, glorified, resurrected body that will be able to live for all eternity with Him. And so if we believe that, we believe that this life is not everything 
that it, that it is, is all about. This life is not everything. That we don't live just for this life. We have much more to live for in the future when the Lord takes us to be with Him forever and we enjoy that life with Him in eternity. That's what that's awaiting us as believers. That should give us not only a wonderful day in the Lord, but just a wonderful life in the Lord. I hope that does that for you as well.